As you guys requested, it's time to talk about a forgotten power. So far during the 21st century, the Falcons have prided themselves on high-octane offense, from the Michael Vick days to now Matt Ryan winning the MVP. But if we go back, back 40 years to 1977, the Falcons were not a good offense. In fact, it was the opposite. They were actually tenacious on the defensive side of the ball, maybe even the greatest defense of all time. This Falcons defense became known as the Grits Blitz. Now to call this the greatest defense of all time is a bold claim, but maybe this graph of the most dominant defenses will help put the 77 Falcons into perspective. They were a statistically dominant defense, and two of the most talked about defenses in the discussion of greatest defense ever are the 2000 Baltimore Ravens and the 1985 Chicago Bears. And it seems like a pretty common opinion that the 85 Bears are the greatest defense ever. Well, let me show you some stats. Like I've shown you already, points allowed per game, yards allowed per game, given up yards per play, and then for the last defensive stat, turnovers forced per game. With all this evidence that this team is the best defense of all time, then why would they always be left out of the discussion of top defenses ever and be considered forgotten? Because as a team, they went 7-7 seven and seven and didn't even make the playoffs. Before you go on and say defense wins championships, you still have to have a somewhat capable offense. And this offense was horrendous. The 70s were the dark ages for the Falcons offense. In 1974, they averaged less than nine points a game. They were shut out three times, and the most points they scored in a game was 17. Just FYI, the Falcons in 2016 averaged almost twice that every game. Let me show you how dominant this defense was, and just how bad this offense played. The moment that summed up the 77 Falcons came when they played the Buffalo Bills in week five. The Falcons trailed three to zero late in the fourth quarter. They had only given up a field goal all game, and their offense just couldn't get anything going. But that's when they blocked a punt and set themselves up to win the game on Buffalo's 13-yard line. Their defense just did all the work. They just had to get 13 yards. Well, they ran four plays, failed to get a first down, and the game was over. But just to describe how good to you this defense actually was, I'm going to show you guys a game that happened later in the season. This game would become the most brutal defensive beatdown in NFL history. November 27th, 1977. Three days past Thanksgiving. And all the Buccaneers could be grateful for was the fact that they still had a football team. Because going into this game, the Buccaneers in 10 games had scored only 4 offensive touchdowns. And they were on a 24 game losing streak. Actually, they had yet to ever win a game as a franchise. They started in 1976 and still hadn't won. Plus on top of that, they were the worst offense of all time, literally dead last. And now, they were about to face the most dominant defense statistically in NFL history. Tampa Bay had two quarterbacks that played, who on 23 pass attempts, completed only five of them and netted only 16 yards. They combined to throw four interceptions and the Bucks offense would go on to have 78 total yards. A normal NFL offense today averages 88.5 per quarter. The Falcons would end up winning that game 17-0. Truly the saddest offensive game ever, along with the most dominating defensive performance the NFL has ever seen. So what made this defense so great? Well, they lived and died by the Blitz, hence the nickname the Grits Blitz. They would load up the box with 8 or 9 guys, and they would send disguised Blitz packages every play so the offense was always on their toes. This defense would later inspire Buddy Ryan to create the 46 Bear. It's actually what the 85 Bears made famous. 
Everywhere online says how Buddy invented the defense, and there's no credit given to the 77 Falcons, which seems fishy because they look incredibly similar. And Buddy Ryan started using this defense in 1978, literally the very next year. Back to the 77 Falcons, the coach who came up with this strategy was defensive backs coach Jerry Glanville, who has one of the weirdest coaching timelines that I've seen. Honestly, I think I could make a video about this dude, so I won't go into a ton of detail, but he worked his way up to defensive coordinator for the Falcons after basically creating the 46 Bear without getting any credit. Then eventually became the head coach of the Oilers, who were often thought of as being a dirty, cheap shot style team. Then he went back to Atlanta, where he did not like the fact that they had drafted Brett Favre. He said once that it would take a plane crash for him to put Favre into a game. He basically made the Falcons trade Favre away then randomly started learning how to race through the teachings of Dale Earnhardt and became a NASCAR driver. Yeah, pretty crazy stuff. Back to the 77 Falcons, other than the fact that this team didn't make the playoffs, the biggest reason they are so unknown is that they didn't have any big time names. And shockingly, they only sent two defenders to the Pro Bowl, cornerback Roland Lawrence and defensive end Claude Humphrey. And Humphrey was the only Hall of Famer from this team. Honestly, I think this makes this defense that much more impressive. It just means they were incredibly well-rounded, with the fact they introduced the origins of a soon-to-be dominant defensive strategy. But for the 77 Falcons, they were truly a one-hit wonder. The year before, the Falcons had one of the worst defenses in the league, and then in 1978, they completely fell apart. But for that 77 defense, they proved that having 11 dudes all on the same page wreaking havoc is something you don't want to mess with. <laughs>